Hello everybody. If you own a Jeep, you're probably all too familiar with that light right there. Check engine light. I think I ride with it on more than I do off. Uh, this time, it's a P0421. Now that points to the catalytic converter. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff out there that you'll read, uh, other causes. Um, uh, statements are usually the catalytic converter doesn't fail on its own, and I'm sure that's true. Uh, at this point, I have replaced all four O2 sensors. I've replaced all the spark plugs and uh, changed the air filter, did anything that I thought could relate to the emissions. And uh, short of being the wire from the O2 sensor to the engine, um, kind of got down to one last thing, and that was to get the software uh, flashed, as they call it, take it to the dealer, have them delete reinstall the software on the car's computer. I did that and within about uh, 25, 30 miles the light came back on. So I'm feeling about 90% sure it's a catalytic converter issue. There are the pre-cats right there. And uh, I'll get my arm in the way of the light here. Here's one of the uh, downstream sensors and the other one over here. I honestly forget which is bank one and which is bank two, um, but it doesn't matter at this point because I replaced them. Uh, they're new. I'm going to run with them for now. Some might say they should be replaced after the cat is replaced, but uh, I've only had them a couple of months, and I don't put a lot of miles on this. It's, a, it's an extra vehicle, so I'm going to keep them, uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is take these guys off and I'm just gonna let them hang. I'm gonna see how much twist I can get in this wire. Uh, I don't wanna damage it, but if I can unthread it without the wire getting uh, too tight from twisting, I'm gonna do that rather than wrestle with those plugs. Honestly, when I changed the O2 sensors, the hardest part was getting those plugs undone rather than getting the sensors loose. I was lucky that they, uh, they broke loose pretty easily. So first thing first, pull these guys out and then We'll go up to these four bolts on the flanges. There's one flange per cat, two bolts each, and we'll just start with these first here. Fortunately, those came out real easy. I had put uh, plenty of anti-seize on there when I put them on. Um, what hasn't been so easy was the bolts on the flanges. Now, the front two and the first of the rear here weren't too bad. Um, the last one here, I'll try to get some light on it, um, gave me a, a little bit of an issue to get to. Um, what I ended up using, uh, at least that seems to bite on this, is a swivel socket. Um, right here. Now this isn't the universal joint. This is actually sort of a swivel and socket in one. This is, that swivel socket did the trick. Uh, it just made it easy to remove those bolts. You can see up in there that uh, flanges are unbolted. Went ahead and removed the four bolts on the bottom of the skid plate that are holding it to the transmission. And set up a few jack stands. Got one under the transmission. I have another under the exhaust pipe just to guide that down when I loosen it from the muffler. And I removed the two outer bolts from the skid plate and opposite there, I removed the center bolt only and have a jack stand holding that end. Um, doing this by myself, I think another set of hands would be great to lower the skid plate. So I'm gonna use this floor jack and put it up against there so that when I take this last bolt out, I can slowly lower this and make sure that that transmission housing isn't going anywhere. I was able to drop that skid plate without uh, too much difficulty by myself, actually. A um, couple points, um, all the way over there by the jack stand there. I'm using a DeWalt impact driver, and uh, that 
took those bolts out pretty easily. And uh, I used the uh, floor jack, which is now supporting the transmission. On the driver's side of the skid plate, had the jack stand on the other, so I just lowered the uh, lowered the floor jack, got one side on the ground, and then went and pulled the jack stand from the other side and uh, um, lowered it down onto my little uh, little floor floor dolly here that I'm sitting on right now, and just slid the skid plate out of the way. Um, I, I don't know, I was a little nervous about that one jack stand under the transmission, so. Um, I went and put the floor jack um, with a piece of blocking um, under the mount for the transmission where the bolts come through the skid plate just to just to give a little a little extra support just in case. I'm going to try and do this quickly here. There are the other two bolts from the end of the exhaust pipe to the muffler. Sprayed them down with WD-40 last night, so hopefully they've loosened up a bit because uh, came out with no difficulty. Um, extra set of hands would have been great, but uh, just you know, let it come down on, from underneath, pulled it out, no big deal. Um, look in the back here. I'll shine some light. You can. Uh, see that honeycomb material and there's some there's some clogging in there but you know it really doesn't look too bad um, same thing here Get some light in there doesn't look bad at all but when you come to this guy there is absolutely no material in there nothing so that would certainly explain why I was getting the engine code. Here is the new catalytic converter and pre-cats. Did a little reading. Found, uh, found this on Amazon from Eastern Catalytic. It was 275, a lot less than the MagnaFlow I was looking at. Read some things in comparison. Um, this is not stainless. Um, it doesn't say what the material is, but I'm going to go by all the other uh, posts that I read that it is not. Um, I've read some comparisons between this and Walker, Walker and Magnaflow, Magnaflow and Eastern, and mixed reviews on all of them. So even if this fails at half its life and I have to do another one, it was easy enough and I'm monetarily still ahead of the game. The one thing that uh, jumps out at me is the pre-cats look a little bigger than the OEM. And the OEM ones just slipped out uh, between the drive shaft. So hopefully this goes in okay. And of course you notice it's in two pieces. Uh, it did come with this little saddle piece. Um, I also bought guy here. So if the saddle doesn't do it for me, um, this is a, a pretty heavy duty connector here. And this, well, I jumped ahead here. Um, just got a little overzealous and forgot to start the uh, video. So first thing I did was slip the rear cat in and just loosely bolt uh, the two nuts on to the muffler. Um, that left this piece hanging so that I could slip the front portion in, swing it up into place, and then uh, rest it on a jack stand there. Um, getting the bolts in are a little difficult, uh, not being able to stand under the vehicle and really get two hands up there, but um, I think I'm managing. Uh, one point. Don't do what I did. Um, you notice something missing there. Um, it's this. I, I should have slipped that on before I put the two together. And I got three of these bolts in um, on the on the flanges to the pre-cats and really don't want to take them off. So 
I'm just going to take this this guy apart and uh, slip it over. But uh, you know, could save myself some time if uh, if I wasn't rushing and was thinking a little bit. Um, one more thing I noticed here: I had a little bit of rust. Um, I had these uh, frame rails painted inside and out, but between the skid plate and the rail, there was some rust. So I wire brushed, um, put a coat of uh, Rust-Oleum on. Now, I've used the POR15, that's a whole different subject. Um, wasn't super impressed by it. Um, there was a good amount of pitting on the skid plate, so I took a drill and a wire wheel, got it down almost to bare metal, and I just got some self-etching primer that uh, that I sprayed on there. Um, that's ready for another coat. So I'm going to coat that another time and uh, take that saddle apart and slip it all bolted up. Got the saddle clamp in place. And um, I did two stupid moves. Um, first, connecting the pipes without slipping the saddle clamp on. Uh, I took it apart, put it on, um, and then I realized I put it on backwards. As you can see, um, there's a thicker end and a narrower end, and uh, the narrower end, of course, goes over the uh, the pipe that slips into the larger pipe, as I've shown, facing the front. Um, I'm going to put this skid plate back on. I'm anxious to start it up, and uh, I'm going to see if that code goes away on its own rather than rather than clearing it first. Um, only thing holding me up right now is I just uh, put another coat of paint over those areas that I brushed to remove the rust between the skid plate and the frame. And crawl over here. And there's the skid plate. It's got a few coats of self-etching primer and a couple coats of just a can of black rust-oleum I happen to have here at the house. I'm gonna give it another coat, let it dry, and throw it back on. Here's what I've rigged up. Set the skid plate on a few jack stands and got my floor jack under there with a nice block of wood and I'm just gonna raise it into place using that. Um, you know, if you got a transmission stand or some other type of lift, uh, but if you're like me and have limited resources and uh, nobody happening to be home when you're doing a project, uh, you've got to improvise. So hopefully this will work. And there they are. Just threaded in the O2 sensors. Now, remember, I didn't take the plug off, so before... I twisted them on, I twisted them in the opposite direction so that as I threaded them, the wire would untwist. Again, uh, really not the best way to do it, but uh, I didn't feel like dealing with those plugs again. Uh, they were uh, they were kind of a pain in the neck to get on and off. And I uh, got the skid plate back on, transmission bolts on, pretty much everything back to normal. Anxious to start this up and see if that code goes away. Now I put some labels on here just just in case I did another classic done move, done move and uh, mixed them up. Uh, but I didn't and they are on and ready to go. Let's fire it up. Alright, moment of truth. No fire, no explosion, no loud noises. Drive it around, see if this light goes off on its own. <laughs> 